<laughs> All right, three. I'm going live. Oh, okay. Yeah. Three. All right. You're on. Okay. We're on. So it, it appears we're we're rolling. <laughs> we're li we're live and training, and we're we're Saturday morning, um, the day before the LTS. Oh, I forgot to put on my. My bracelet thing. Yeah, my watch. Well, good. <laughs> good. That's one of us. Um, so we are we are actually filming with the camera as well as we're going YouTube live. So we did the test yesterday with They're the YouTube. To, but Ken's phone. Yeah. So we did the test yesterday with YouTube live, and when we did it, it seemed really pixelated and blurry. But I don't know if any of you have gone back on and watched it. But after I think it was after about two hours. It now is like crystal clear. So, if it if that happens again, if we're fuzzy and blurry as we're broadcasting right now, just know that either it will clear up with a YouTube video, or we will have the option of we're also filming with the camera. We have the option of doing that. So it, it just depends on what happens in the well, next. That blurriness few hours. Is, is maybe something in the YouTube. It might not show might not be blurry this time. Yeah, we don't. Something yeah. in right the now process. it appears to be clear. Yeah. It's clear so. in Florida, anyway. Something in the YouTube process caused it to be a little blurry. Maybe they were real busy. Who knows? Yeah, maybe the, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, Idaho, I can't, Wisconsin I can't, in the house. Can't figure out uh, the whole broadcasting thing, but you know, we're gonna, if it works out, we're gonna stay with just the YouTube live broadcast and not do the film. But it will be posted Russell on the on the Malta. video. Who? Okay. Russell from Malta. All right, terrific. If you see this light down here, this is a night light that I made. Sawdust makes me <laughs> happy with our, our website on it. This is for a giveaway for our premium members later on in the show. Uh, we'll actually draw a number. One of our premium members will actually get this as a as a giveaway for our uh, our live training session giveaway. So, so that um, being said, you want me to talk about my letters and num my yeah, numbers? Let, uh, let, the, let people give it a couple more minutes. So mm -hmm. let us know so you can see the comments. Yeah, somewhere. yeah. S somebody said it was blurry from somewhere, but I can't remember. But okay. So so I'm in about in a couple of minutes. I want to have you repeat that. Uh, Kansas says it looks good. Bill Morris says it looks good. Okay. But in a couple of minutes, have you repeat that? Um, the whole thing and then, about no, I want and also go into the speed of the thing that yeah um, okay so we got a comment yesterday on the on uh, after the live video that at the bottom right of your screen as you're viewing this hopefully and I was kind of checking it out too there's a little gear down there and it allowed if you click on that it allows you to watch at certain speeds I, from my basically what I understood about the comment so um, you might play around with that a little bit and see if that if you are getting blurry check with that and see if um, if that makes a difference I think you can do like 1080p or 780p I don't know 2253p I, I don't I don't so they know said it was blurry, but it seems to be coming out clear Sweden's clear <laughs> Sweden's um, clear yeah yeah it's always clear over there <laughs> <laughs> good, good. I'm glad to hear that so far everything is is uh, is right. No everything, is, everything's no working. That's the main thing so okay. far. Yes. So um, the other thing, in case you you're just now coming in, um, yesterday's video was blurry when we broadcasted it, or it was kind of in and out blurry. But if you go back and watch it now, um, it should be crystal clear. It was like two hours later, it came up crystal clear. And it's, so, on, it's on YouTube now. Yeah, yeah, it's on YouTube. I think it's <coughs> testing. You know, I'll probably change the title on it. But um, okay, so let's, uh, let's get into the actual, your portion of it. I'll get out of the way. I'll move this over. Yeah, I just wanted to let, uh, let the viewers know, most of you know, uh, a lot of you know that we have, Another side to our business as far as in addition to the sign carving part of it and that is the letters and numbers. I make wood letters and numbers and I have for years. These are a couple examples of 
some of the table numbers that I've designed and made over the years. And I've been making them for, for 20 years. I've been making table numbers. Uh, I advertise them in different places online. <clears throat> and it occurred to me that table numbers are pretty popular, especially this time of year. And our sign carving uh, students and customers, this is a this is a table number that I made. It took me maybe 10 minutes to make that. And it's all made out of the same cedar boards that we buy, just cedar fencing boards. Just laid it out and carved it. Same thing, you can cut a little piece for the base, put a couple of screws in for the base. You can make these in, in a board a six foot board it costs you like three bucks. Uh, you can make like six or eight of these out of that without any problem at all. And you get ten dollars a piece for them. So for something that costs you three dollars you can make sixty dollars with it. And it's uh, <clears throat> it only takes just a few minutes to make these. You can make the boards up ahead of time, get everything ready. Now the, the numbers that I use you can use any number, but the numbers that I use, this is a three and a half inch impact font. Uh, you can use any any number that you want, it doesn't matter, bigger or smaller, whatever, whatever will fit on the board. I like these because <clears throat> any two will fit on these five and a quarter inch boards. That's why I like that impact font. So this is just uh, something that I want to let you know that there are different things that you can do for routed signs that you can make an income, you can make money off of. Uh, so I just wanted to let you know that's, that's just an idea that I had that I thought I should pass on to you so that you know what was going on. On that, uh, Dad, on that number five that you carved there, yeah. um, uh, what bits did you use on that? I used a profile bit for for curving around the, the number and then a profile bit for making the oval. Then I use the 90 degree to go and do the cleanup. Gotcha. So okay. it's, it's basically the same. Then the 45 degree for the chamfer. So it's basically the same bits that you're using for all sign carving. Right. It's just that <clears throat> I thought I, I got the idea that maybe you weren't aware that you can make uh, that you can make table numbers yeah. and if you have them, like if you're going out to a craft show or something, if you make a few of these up, you will, uh, you'll get some results out of it. What's, what size is that board? That board is, that's five and a quarter inch off of the stand. But I mean, uh, height wise, what, what length ten is Ten inch. That? That's ten inches tall, that whole board? Uh, might, be, might be eight inches. Yeah, yeah eight it doesn't inches. look like it's ten. Yeah, it's eight inches. By five and a quarter. Okay. So, yeah, that's now, cool. Another thing that you can do, I let this space on the bottom. If your customer should want their name or their date or something like that, oh, there's yeah. room on there to do that. So I left a little space there. Other than that, you can center this. So just use your own imagination. I just did this as an example to show you what can be done. So. You didn't bring anything to drink out with you, did no, you? No, I didn't bring anything to my throat's a little scratchy. Okay. All right. So um, I know that it, there, there have been some comments. I was just looking some comments that it was blurry and then it kind of clears up. But um, hopefully the sound is good. I, we haven't, I haven't seen any comments as far as the sound. So hopefully the sound is good. And um, uh, again, maybe in a couple hours, this will come through and it will be clear you know, it won't be any uh, uh, any fuzziness on YouTube. So we'll see. So it is time to do our drawing. Mm -hmm. So that over closer to you, Dad. what's that? Oh, put this. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Dad is uh, sure he is the drawer for. So these are all of our premium members have a have a basically a, a number in here. And so I'm he's going to pull a ticket down in there and pull one out. We'll see who the premium member is that's going to get this. So we'll be shipping this out either today or Monday, probably Monday. I'll get in with my other hand. My thumb is still kind of messed up from the 
from the accident. <laughs> from the okay, accident. I've got that. And the winner is number 88. 88. And <clears throat> Vicky is feverishly looking up number 88 to see who it is. Here, hold it up. Oh, okay. Karen Paglia. Karen Paglia. Karen, we're going to send this out to you. Nope. This one? In, nope. in, uh, in Monday's mail. To you. Yeah, you had it pointing to the other camera. 88, Karen Paglia. There she is. Oh, I like doing it that way so much better. And that shows up over there, too, I, I would know, imagine. Uh, you got to cut. Oh, no, it should be good. 88, Karen Paglia. Yep. Excellent. Congratulations, Karen. We'll be shipping that out to you. I know we have... We've got all of her information, oh, yeah. so yeah. Um, congratulations. And we'll be sending you a different one. This one is kind of our display, and it's kind of, kind of scratched up. You but you'll get one with the paper on it, and it'll be absolutely pristine with no scratches. Yeah, I leave the, I leave the paper on anytime I can, and it peels off pretty easy. So you'll get one with the paper on, you have to peel the paper off. Okay. So I take care of that. All right. I'm going to move out of here, and you've got some stuff that you want to show. Yeah. We're, we're doing good on time so far, yeah, right? So be back here, Dave. Dave, by 25 till, come back in if you're going out. Oh, okay. Or if you want to sit down over there, you can do that, too. No, I got, I got some stuff I have to do. Okay. So I'll be back uh, in about 20 minutes. minutes. 25 minutes. Yeah. 20 minutes. 25 minutes. 25 minutes. Yeah, that's what I said. 20, 25 minutes. Um, in case you guys haven't noticed, we normally sit in these chairs back here, but we've decided that if I'm not carving, if I'm not actually doing a carving deal, um, we've got these uh, new stools, actually, that Vicky got, and uh, they mm -hmm. seem to raise us up a little bit better. So I like it better, and Vic likes it better, and that's the main thing. So, um, <laughs> All right, so... Here's the deal. The other day, about a week ago, two weeks ago, Vicky did, uh, Vicky actually ran some power tools on, on camera. She ran the, the little angle grinder and she ran the little uh, yes, Dremel Dan, tool. Yes, I do. And, so Vicky rocks. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she does rock. So what I want to do is we left some of the details out about uh, how we do that faux edge. I want to actually do that uh, here. Because she got all the fun with that thing, and I didn't get to play with it at all. So I have been playing with it last few days. So I'm going to come around to the front of the bench, and we're going to do a, a live demo on how we do that faux edge, and um, actually kind of an upgrade on it. Bear with me, I got camera moving. All right, moving. so we got to give me a minute here. I got to set this up. So I'm just going to do this whole edge, and. Uh, I'm talking as I'm clamping this down. So there's a lot of a lot of things when you're working with this angle grinder stuff, guys. Make absolutely sure uh, that thing is pretty dangerous if you don't do it right. So um, make absolutely sure your work is clamped down really well. This is probably not the best way to do this, but I it is safe because I I clamp it down really good. Now. When Vicky did it uh, on that flag sign, and that was for the John Malecki uh, flag deal, um, she was using uh, the angle grinder, and she was using a flap disc. Which I didn't like. Yeah, and actually it wasn't as good as a different disc that I really like. Well, the first one that I did on a, when I was practicing it was that. Yeah, disc. but on film you yeah. were using the flap yeah, disc. This is made by Sabretooth. So if you guys don't know who they are, man, the things that they make for doing, uh, for grinding, both tools that I'm going to use today are Sabertooth. This is the, um, the fine grit, and they have a fine, a uh, medium, a coarse, and an extra coarse. And each one is a different color. So I think it's yellow, green, uh, orange, and gosh, there's another color. Another color, but anyway, there's four different grits now. So I've got this on here, and you can see how it has kind of a contour to it. Um, I like that again. They've got 
a ton of different kind. Some of them have holes so that when it's spinning, you can actually see your work. <laughs> Frank Jenkins eating chips and salsa while watching the King and Queen. Oh Soto. man, you're making me jealous, Frank. So as it spins, and by the way, the, the, this is pretty loud. So if you guys have some hearing issues, turn your volume down. But watch as that spins. That's what I kept doing. Well, it doesn't, I don't know if you can see through it, but as I do this, you'll be able to see through it. The other thing is, I always wear gloves when I'm doing this, um, but if you're going to wear gloves, make sure they're nice and tight fitting gloves. You definitely do not want to lose a grip on this thing. Okay, hold on. Hold on a minute, Elder. Let's see. Close up. The other thing is. Turn it kind of sideways so we can see the. The other way. Keep your, no. This way. Well, sideways. This way? I don't know what you mean by sideways. I'm punch you in the throat. <laughs> what do you mean by sideways? Draw me a diagram. Well, which, way, which way? Is that sideways? Towards me. No. 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 <laughs> I don't know what you want. Gosh. You put the you're the worst director ever. What? Oh, my God. I don't know. I honestly, I'm not jacking with you. I just don't know. This way. Here, you no, take it. Turn it this way. This way. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> My Lord. <laughs> <laughs> what? Are we a comedy show now? Anyway, all right. Suck it up, Buttercup. <laughs> Contain yourself. All right. So we're using, <laughs> we're using, this is serious stuff. We're using, I, I switched over to a, a paddle deal so that if it if you let go of it it automatically goes off that's a much better uh tool than i had before oh wait stop gosh darn all right the other thing that i always use is a shield vicky's losing it i don't know who said what but vicky is losing it right now do you want me to just carry forward or what okay though so i like the face shield um Mm, okay. All right. So, also on that slab that I did, you knew I was I was using a jigsaw on that. Honestly, with this thing, you don't need a jigsaw. Let me show you why. Okay, hold on. Let me wipe the tears out of my eyes. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. All right. Here we go. So tell me, is that like slick or what? Man, I love this thing. Anyway, these saber tooth, um, I wish I, I wish they were a sponsor of mine because I could. These things are awesome. I just, I love them. So that's that gives me my angle that I want, which is before I used. Um, obviously, I used the the jigsaw, but this thing is so cool. So uh, you know, you don't have to be exact on that, and I was barely putting any pressure on it at all. So, you know, it will, that thing will grind. And this is the, fu this is the fine, the, um, the course, man, I, you'd really have to be careful with the course. So let me now, we'll use, I'm not pounding. It was the chair. It wasn't me. So now we how have. Uh, somebody asked how smooth does it leave it? It doesn't matter because we're not going to leave it smooth. You know what? If you go slower, it's it's actually smoother. So it, yeah, that thing's very smooth. I mean, it, it's really smooth. I did another one. I did one earlier yesterday. I don't know if this will, well, I'm, well, this back will it up, help. Back it up. Because I'm zoomed right it, in on it the is, it, it will grind it really smooth, but you can make it choppy if you want. So you could, the thing about this faux edge, guys, is you can make it uh, however you want. You're going to find what works best for you. So now this is another saber tooth um, oh, tool. There you go. I'm zoomed right in yeah. on the board. So oh, okay. Gonna... And this is the green, so this is the coarse. Uh, yeah, I think orange is I like extra coarse. This is the course, 
And this is, um, these by the way are, if you go to our video 241, the links will be there for both of these. But this one is the 8th inch shank and it's, uh, it's the Roto Saw Coarse Grit. And it's like $16.50 or something. Now the other one, that 4 inch disc, that's about 60 bucks. But they last like forever. So anyway, so let's, uh, let's see what we can do here. So obviously, I just go kind of randomly. You may like a different pattern, maybe longer. You know, there's, there's so many different ways that you can go about it. But basically, you know, that, that is really all there is to it. Now, the way Vicky did it, and what I'm going to do here, is just go with the dark walnut stain. This is um, <coughs> dark walnut 2716. Tool for opening that can up. Can I move this? Yes. I don't need it now. So I'll just. <coughs> anyway, these little saber tooth tools, again, I, I don't have any dog in this fight. I just know these things, I really love them. I, I, I'll probably never go back to those other ones at all. So I'm just going to use a little sponge. Yeah, that's much easier than the Oh yeah, did. Vicky was using a rag on the one, oh, on, on the other one. Oh, where's my rag? Uh, shoot, I left my rag outside. Well, I'll use this one. It's not really underwear, guys. <laughs> we recycle everything around here. <laughs> yeah, I am dripping on the floor a little bit, but... Anyway, so you can make it as light or as dark as you want. But check that out. I mean, I love this. I, I love this faux edge. I'm going to start using this a lot more. Doing this a lot more on stuff. I just think this stuff looks... It just really has a good look to it. That's as much as I need to do. So you can play around with different colors. If you if this is too dark, play around with the lighter colors. Um, there's so many different variations. I don't need one, Bill. I just have allergies. Uh, and a little sawdust didn't help it. Yeah, that thing does create a lot of sawdust. So as far as safety goes, remember, guys, you know, now some people do it without gloves. I like a nice, tight-fitting glove. Um, Definitely always use this guard uh, and, and turn it this way so you've got that front edge that you can play with. Uh, I wouldn't any, even consider taking that guard off. Again, I like the paddle. Uh, so if something does happen, it slips, it goes off by itself. Um, it, it just, uh, it's, it's so cool. Now, what I do after that, then I put a finish on it. This is one I did yesterday. And this is what it looks like with a finish on it. It's just a couple coats of clear on there. Now, Vicky, the one Vicky did, she actually, um, we, the resin went down over the edge. And so it makes it uh, a little bit, I don't know, a little bit thicker. Are we done? 
Okay, so here's what it looks like. I actually, uh, here's a test piece that we did when we did the resin. And that really, this is actually one that Vicky did. And we, uh, we poured resin on this as a test. Over here, this, you know, we tried it two or three different ways, but that's with the resin on the edge. So you can see Vicky when she did it, she did more longer strokes, um, but she was using the flap sander, I think. It wasn't uh, wasn't this, uh, and and then this little tool is just it's a learn pretty as cool. you go. Yep, yep. So there's so many different variations, guys. But I'm telling you, it is fun. And if you guys can't get the live edge stuff, man, it is. Uh, that is definitely uh, a great way to go. And it's so much less expensive. Let me tear this down real quick. Sorry for the shaking, guys. That's the. That's our four. What's the name of the resin? Huh? Frank wants to know what the name of the resin. Oh, we use the uh, the Envirotex. Um, Envirotex Light is what we've used so far. Although I do want to try some other stuff. I hear great things about West Systems um, and uh, Art Resin. I hear great things actually about several different kinds of resins that I want to try. We just haven't done it yet. So, but, uh, but it's coming. We're going to be doing more. All right, where are we at? Okay, what now? Oh, that. Okay. All right, let me put these away. And uh, so now we're going to kind of go over. Donald Spicer says he used Pro Marine epoxy. Pro Marine? Really? Is that good for, uh, uh, it sounds like it's good for exterior because that's a, what one thing that I want to do is get into stuff that's good for exterior use. And I don't, this Envirotex is only interior. All right, so next, let me get some of this sawdust off the, off the table here. We have a brand new set of layout templates. Let's see if I can get some redwood in my drink there. This is one that Vicky just came up with. Turn it around, see if I can do this right. I carved them all in the last day or two. This is the new wedding set. So 10 different, uh, 10 different layouts coming into kind of the wedding season and actually it kind of uh, mixes in with what dad was doing on the table numbers. So um, all of these, I think I've pretty much carved them all um, inset except for the, the champagne glasses. I did that outset, but everything else looked like it would be better inset. This one, of course, I just carved the carved the wood color away um, and left the black. Uh, same with the cake. Well, and we lost our connection. We lost our connection? No way. Really? Well. Says it was, well, keep going. Well, we'll still keep, we'll keep going after it. We'll keep filming. Sorry about losing our connection. Maybe we will be posting the video afterwards. So that's the new uh, the new template set. They'll be a, they'll be on the website what by the end of the day. What's that? Anyway, oh, we're back. They'll be on the website by the end of the by the end of the weekend. Uh, these will be on the website. The new wedding set, and then the template of the month. We've been wanting to do this for quite a while. Template of the month is puppy paws. So that's what you premium members will receive for April's template of the month. Um, They're all on the website, or will be. Yeah. And um, you know what? Uh, I don't know why it took us so long to do those, because when I was in Oatman, I carved those all the time. I just basically drew them out. Um, but I carved tons of little bone signs, or the small ribbons, or the even the bigger ribbons. And people, cause, you know, it, it just is kind of a... Uh, a truth that uh, snowbirds and a lot of retired people that are are traveling around a lot of them have small dogs or even big dogs and these are so popular with the with the snowbirds but they're popular everywhere but um, the pet industry is huge so definitely uh, if you don't have a template on puppy paws again we made a template but you can draw them 
they're not that hard to draw you can draw them too so um, they, they add a really nice little element to pet signs whether it's um, you know name signs or feeding uh, bowl signs or whatever so um, what else what are we forgetting I think we're Somebody good. asked a question on how much you would charge for a faux edge. Uh, you know, uh, depending on how big the sign is, if I was going to add the faux edge, it uh, obviously takes longer. There's more involved in it. But probably, you know, if it's a pretty good size sign, probably an extra 25 bucks seems fair for doing a faux edge on there. All right. Some of these I'm not going to even, uh, I won't ask until your dad comes back in. But okay. I can scroll back up. and. Yeah. Well, if there's any questions now um, the other thing about the uh, like I say I've got links to both those uh, I'll have them and actually after I edit this video I'll have the links to those two items uh, saber tooth items there and they're also on video 41 which is our supplies video I've already added them on there so uh, the links you know full discretion the links uh, full discretion full uh, that's not the word I'm looking for. Disclosure. That's it. Full disclosure. Yeah, we try to keep discretion too. Oh my gosh. Full disclosure. The links that you see will actually be our affiliate links to Amazon items. So we found them on Amazon and put our affiliate link. So I think the, the big one, I think is about 60 bucks, even though I think I paid directly from Sabretooth. I think I paid about 80 for that. Um, and then the little the little uh, version is um, I think sixteen fifty, and they also have them in quarter inch shank by the way. Um, uh, so I, I'm going to be getting some of those and kind of playing around with those. Um, Sue Alexander, back in where are you at, Sue? I know you're you're She's probably here. watching. I know. I saw you're her. watching. Sue, are you in Indiana? I can't remember for sure, but Sue has actually tried the quarter inch shank saber tooth deals like the like the little one um in her router she actually illinois. i was right illinois dang it i was so close um at least i didn't say idaho anyway so she uh, uh, sue you have tried those on uh, uh in your router right and uh, and she she checked with the actual manufacturer and they said that you could actually run them um in your router because they'll go up to 35,000 RPM and still be safe. Now, I don't think I would run the eighth inch shank with like a uh, like the reducer in there, just because I don't know if I trust eighth inch shank in a router under load at that kind of RPMs. I think I wouldn't do any less than quarter inch shank in my router with doing this stuff. So um, anyway, so, if you guys have any questions on that, obviously, uh, ask away. Um, is Dad going to... Uh, we uh, told him 25 tail, Phil. So, 25 tail? Is that what mm -hmm. you said? Okay. So, any other questions for me? I know everybody wants to wait till Dad gets here to ask questions. By the way, okay, so uh, let me go into this. Sue says she loves the uh, saber tooths. She loves them. Yeah. Here's one that's Splinter Fingers Woodworking. It says, how long did it take you guys to get your name out there so that your business would pick up? Oh, gosh. 50 years? It, it, yeah. We're still working on that. Um, from a sign standpoint, actually, it, it picked up. Uh, back when we were just doing signs and selling routed signs, uh, I was selling Dad's them. Here. Yeah, there's Dad's. That's his uh, scooter sound. So um, I was selling them door to door. Dad was making the signs. Actually, my brother and I were selling them door to door. We started making signs and uh, and get our name out there right away. We went to flea markets, horse shows, craft shows, um, and we did those. Uh, our business, you know, the first few years, uh, it picked up right away. So it, it's not it's not a matter of how long. It's really a matter of how hard you want to work. It, it really comes down to that. You you know, I've got some success stories where guys have gone in. In fact, I did a uh, I'll be doing a success story on Monday's video about a guy that sold 94 signs in one shot. 
you know, but so, it, you know, it's not a matter of how long it takes. It's a matter of, you know, getting out there and getting them in front of people, honestly. Sometimes. Wouldn't you agree? Being, yeah, being at the right place at the right time can make a big difference. But it's like anything else, you can't fail if you don't give up. Uh, just keep on keeping on. Yeah. It, it really comes down to getting your signs in front of enough people, it, it, whether, it's, whether it's at fairs or craft shows or door to door, whether it's, you know, selling through dealers, whether it's online, getting your signs in front of enough people, they'll sell themselves. Yeah, and I say it all the time. Yeah, and with the internet now, it's, it's so much easier than it ever was before. Okay. Uh, you get, literally, you get hundreds of millions of people on the internet that are looking for what you have. Uh, all you have to do is get it in front of them. All right, let me tell you some of the places that people are <coughs> cool. You have Sweden, Kansas, North Carolina. Uh, you say Sweden? Sweden, Sweden. Illinois, yeah. uh, Colorado, wow. Corpus Christi. Uh, I know we had Algeria the other day on uh, the test. Yeah, yeah. Algeria and England. Yeah. Yeah, I'm constantly amazed at how many people we get watching us from all over the world. I mean, from, you know, geographical locations that I've probably never heard of. All right. Uh, let's see. Certainly never been there. Yeah. <laughs> when I said I was going to throw a punch you. I said, oh, no, not a throat punch. Um, let's see. You're here while Vicky's being a good director. When you were gone, she was just, man, she was just she like, was brutal. Oh, oh I she was, was brutal. not. You stop it. <laughs> was she brutal, you guys? No. I was trying my Susan best. Susan Allen she... she loves me. Who? And some Morgan said, breathe, Vicky, just breathe. <laughs> yeah, she was, I, I'm telling you, she was getting out of hand. I'm so glad now, the tripod was between us. So now us. we are paddles and throat punches. Awesome. <laughs> paddles and throat punches. Joe Rudd. That would be yeah, it would be a new uh, a new video paddles and throat punches. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> funny. Um, let's see, what was the name of that disc again? That yellow disc. It was this one was um, actually I wrote it down. It was the the fine grit, which is yellow, and it was a four inch, five eighths. Uh, it's a five eighths uh, arbor. Uh, and it has the holes in it. So some of them are solid, but that one had the holes in it. And it's for the four inch uh, angle grinder. Okay. And it, it, again, saber tooth. Corpus Christi, Illinois. Um, Michael Duncan said that was an, what an awesome technique. Thank you, Michael. Um, Glad Susan you enjoyed it. Uh, saber, saber tooths are the best. I won't Michael any who? other. Michael somebody, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Michael Duncan. Oh, Duncan. I thought you said Douglas. No. <laughs> no. Uh, Bill Murray, Mo Bill, Bill, now I'm thinking actors. Bill Morris says, would you do this on a smaller edge? Sure. Uh, yeah, you know, I, and I thought about that, like a one inch or a, a regular board. I haven't done it, but absolutely I would. They're here from South Africa. Cool, South Africa. Henry something from South Africa. Um... Yeah, I would do it on a on a thinner edge. Uh, it, it's a little easier to demo it on an inch and a half edge. That's why I did it. But I, I absolutely would do it on a uh, Canada on a thinner edge. Okay, uh, Darren Lindsay asked, "Would you ever do a live edge on a three quarter inch?" Please. Yeah, absolutely. I and absolutely again, I would. Several people have asked, "How much would you charge for that faux edge?" Again, if it's a bit a pretty big sign, I think. Um, uh, on a regular six by twenty-four, maybe another five or ten bucks. On a bigger sign, probably twenty-five or thirty, depending on how how big it was. Um, Jeff Walters says uh, he uses eco epoxy. Eco epoxy. Well. Really, so many di and epoxy. Uh, if you guys watch very much YouTube, England? epoxies are like the rage right now. Everybody's doing river tables and epoxies and all of that stuff. It, it's, I think it's going to... Yeah, it's funny, you know, I can remember back in the 
in the early 60s, epoxy was just discovered and all of a sudden it was a huge thing. And now over the years it's kind of kind of leveled out now all of a sudden epoxy is a huge thing again. Yeah, so, right now it's uh, it's very popular on YouTube. All the river tables and stuff that's going on. Justin Hill. I remember Hill. back when we made fig tables, tables, uh, end tables, and out of fig wood. Yeah. And we fig slabs. covered them with epoxy, and this was back in the early '60s. It was huge. Yeah, it's popular again. Yeah, very, yeah. very popular. Now all of a sudden, the epoxy tables are popular yeah. again. You see all different kinds of woods. Uh, let's Amazing. see. We've got Scotland, uh, English man living in France. St. Louis, Ohio. Wow, Scotland. Yeah. Wow, man. Okay, the so one thing that, that is different Michigan, these days, though, Mexico, with the epoxies that I don't Iowa. know was back then, now you can get colored tint for them. So then now they're not just clear. You can actually get, like, Matt Cremona just did one where he put, like, blue metal flake and, and uh, some blue in there. So it really has uh, amazing colors well, that I've you can seen do now. Back in the 60s, I saw a guy that took metal flake and sprinkled it on. But, oh, really? But he didn't use any color. It was all just crystal clear. Then the metal flake in there made it look gotcha. pretty, pretty gotcha. neat. Oh, so let's see. <coughs> That's my question. Where did it go? There's so many different Australia things you can do with it, there. though. I had a question, and it went away. Yeah, if you want to see what you can do with epoxy, just uh, look at some of the YouTube videos that are made by oh by people that are that are really first class at that. I mean, yeah. that's what they do. Yeah. Some of those are just spectacular. Well, these people are making friends and meet, planning on meeting up. That's funny. Oh, Friends. people are connecting. People are connecting That's yeah. cool. That's great. Uh, Wish we could what be is there. It, they, oh, people that are that are uh, viewers of ours are kind of connecting and and planning to meet up. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, they're doing it right now, and they're planning on doing meetups within yeah. themselves. Great. So that's a that's a um, great. Uh, I have a question for Vicky. Dan, I'm going to smack you for this one. When will you make a sports template set? I had somebody else ask oh, me that boy. the other day. I have one working on it. I'm working on it. <sighs> so when you mean when you say sports, make sure that you guys are talking about the same thing. Like a football player, basketball player, baseball player, wrestler, boxer. Those are the kinds of sports things that you're talking about, right, Vic? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, here's a question and uh, the answer is probably gonna be I'll let you answer it. <laughs> Okay. Can you make a video of doing every template that you sell? No. That's I could, but it'd be 17 hours long, and I'm sorry. <laughs> no. If you want to see every template that we... Now, now here's the thing. When we come out with a new one like this, there, there they are. That's the whole deal. And every time we come out with a new set, we'll do that. But, to, I mean, we've got hundreds of templates. Yeah. To do that all in one video just is yeah. not practical. We just can't do it. Um, they are available. Oh, on, everything's as far on the, as the picture is available on the website. Yeah, the, the pictures like this, they just don't show carved. You know, right. they look like that on the uh, website. How many signs? Reconnecting. Uh oh, reconnecting. Did you turn off your Wi-Fi thing? No, I don't think any of us did actually. We've lost signal a couple times. Hmm. No, I haven't been in my office at my All desk, right. so I haven't turned anything off. Well, we're just going to keep going here. Okay. I think we're back. Okay. Uh, the question was, uh, how many signs on average uh, would you sell a day up in Oatman? Uh, gosh, an average day? And I actually averaged it out uh, for six years, six and a half years that I was there. Um, I think, it, uh, gosh, it's been a long time since I looked at the figures, but I think it was like um, I ended up doing about, like, uh, I think it, it was average goods and bads, average about $140 a day. Um, so if you extrapolate that out, you know, sometimes I would be doing 25 signs a day, sometimes six or seven. So probably I averaged out about 10 signs a day, I'd say. Okay. Eight, eight and back in the 70s, 
<coughs> when he was just a teenager, uh, we carved it uh, at the San Jose flea market. And I did on the average over there, I always averaged 15 to 25 signs a day, so probably averaged around 20. Uh, just, we didn't get quite as much for them in those days, but we still did a big volume in signs. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we're trying to reconnect again. Why is this? I don't know. Maybe it's Saturday morning. YouTube is just swamped. I don't know. All right. I well, mean, one of the questions was, uh, oh, she asked, Deborah Edwards, I believe it was, asked if we could, we would make or if we sell lowercase letters. Um, so just so that I'm going to answer her, it's a special order. There is a special art fee included plus the price. And if you want the, the, uh, then if you want them to be in proportion with the, say, one inch, two inch, or whatever, they will be the same price as the one inch or two inch. There's yeah. no special. Yeah, we so, will, we will make lowercase letters as special orders, but we don't have them as a standard item. Yeah. Well, no, I will not have them on the website either. Um, we do not have some joe rudd says we have lowercase letters on the website nope we don't well if you're talking about dave signs well we're talking make a wood sign they're not on there yeah dave signs i do have a couple of fonts with with upper and lowercase letters brush script uh six inch and nine inch upper and lowercase letters but that's on Dave's signs, not on Make a Wood sign. But those are not layout those letters. Are, exactly. those, those are, are not the layout letters. The other part of our business. Those are letters that you buy to make an overlay type sign. You buy them, decorate them, put them on a board, make your own sign. That's what the overlay letters are. Kind of, kind of akin to the the numbers that you just shown. Those yeah, aren't for. That, yeah. Yeah, they're not for carving signs. <clears throat> yeah, because I've got some expensive machinery that I use to cut those. Now those of you who have a CNC machine, you know you can cut your own letters, but uh, the, only, the only letters I have lowercase as standard are what I cut on a machine, and they're not layout letters. Right, um, do they use a program for drawing? I'm not sure what you mean. This is Yo So Pepe Mora. A program for drawing. I, I, I suppose Corel Draw will do that if what, you knew how to do it. Well, well, this is totally off. This totally off of the uh, letter number um, topic. Yeah. But I'm just trying to catch up. Yeah. Um. So, what do you mean for drawing on the programs? Do you mean? Like the rapid resizer, or are you talking about Corel Draw? I'm not sure what that meant, what that's regarding. Uh, can Dave make acrylic gears in need of, uh, to get some done? Acrylic Ooh. gears? Acrylic ears? Gears. Gears. <laughs> you need to get the gears out of your ear. Gears. Gears. Yeah, I can, anything, anytime, any shape that you want, I can cut out of acrylic. But I need a PDF file or I need a file, a vector file uh, in order to cut it. But other than that, yeah, the laser will cut anything that I put into it until it's cut. But only up to a quarter of an inch thick, correct? I mean, if they wanted them half inch thick, you... Yeah, I, I can't cut half inch thick quarter acrylic. Inch thick. Quarter inch acrylic is, is the heaviest that my lasers will cut. We have fairly small lasers, yeah. Uh, somebody wants to know what age you were when you started carving signs. Ooh. Well, it was 1970, and I'm 80, almost 85 now, so you figure it out. Well, you were born in 34. Yeah, it's 30, I, yeah, I was born in 34, but right. I started carving signs in 1970. So, how many years? Yeah. Well, you were, what, 36? I was 35, 36. Yeah. How are you drawing? And I'm going on 85 now. So. You cut out. It's all, I've, Justin, it's all I've ever done for the last 50 years. We don't have a CNC machine. We have lasers, but we use uh, Corel Draw um, for the uh, laser program. 
So technically Same. speaking, the, our lasers are CNC because that stands oh. computer numeric controlled. So technically, our lasers are CNC, but they're not CNC routers. They're CNC layers. All right, layers. All they are is printers, really. Somebody wants to know how much you charge for a live to ride sign. I charge about a hundred bucks. It's about uh, ninety ninety dollars plus um, like uh, fifteen dollars. What is it? Eighty nine ninety five. I think is what I've got them listed at. And there's like fifteen dollars shipping, so one hundred and five hundred ten oh, bucks. Here. Joe Rudd said cedar. Oh, hold on. There was a question about wood. Hold on. Uh, We're doing good on time. Somebody was asking about what kind of wood. Uh, sales question from Michael Duncan. Would you recommend doing work before paid or paid then work? <laughs> paid and then work. I don't do everybody. anything. I, know, I mean nothing that I don't get paid for before I do it because it's custom. Yeah. Uh, if you go order something anywhere that makes custom items you're going to pay for that custom item when you order it. This business is no different. Somebody wants a custom item, they pay for it. They do, you don't take a 50% deposit. You don't take a, you know, a COD. They order the sign, they pay for it, you make it. It's, the, only, I, the only exception I, to that is stock signs. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of times up in Oatman, I sold stock signs and, I, you know, I'm making them up ahead of time. But they're not custom items. Those are stock items. So that's a di that's the but difference. But you get cash for them at the time. You don't uh, when they buy it. They buy it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, I'm gonna uh, Frank Jenkins. <clears throat> hey, Frank. He says a local newspaper did an article on me. I saw. And my commercial signs have taken off. Free publicity from that paper paid off. Yeah, that's, that's the thing you might you might bear in mind. Now, even back in the 70s, yeah. I had uh, several articles for the local newspaper that did on me. They look for local uh, stories of interest. <clears throat> so call your local newspaper, get a hold of the editor, tell them who you are, what you do, and that you'd like somebody to come out uh, and do some sort of an article on, on what you do. Most newspapers will do that. It's free advertising and it's as good as you can get. Yep. Bill Jones says, what kind of wood do you, I guess, buy when you buy from a craft store? Well, we don't buy from a craft store, but if you did, you'd be buying a balsa or Baltic birch. Almost always, Anyone yeah. Anyone have tips on staining the process? Staining? Um, Gosh, go to YouTube. There's. <laughs> There's about a billion videos on staining. It all depends on what kind of wood it is. I don't do a lot of staining. Um, I don't do any. Yeah, because, you know, most of the wood that I like, that I use, in most cases, I like just clear oh, on okay. it. Okay, that, that's the that one I was asking about, the wood, two kinds of woods. Thank you, Darren. Uh, he says, Vicki, the question was, which wood is easier to cut, cedar or pine? Cedar. Cedar. Pine in most cedar. cases. There are there are species of cedar <clears throat> that is like like metal to cut. Uh, some of it is very tough, but by and large, cedar is is about twice as easy to carve as pine. Softer, but the other the other the other side of that sometimes cedar can be grainy, so that you will be soft hard soft hard. Whereas pine, the select pine that I use, I don't find that very much. It, it's harder, but it's very consistent it's all the way through. Yeah. It's very consistent all yeah. the way through. Whereas right. some cedar, even, uh, well, this board was really soft. This one was didn't really have any tough grain, although I would have been if I had done it in the knot. So sometimes cedar can be so soft that there'll be a hard grain, and then you've got a hard, soft, hard, soft thing, makes it tough to hold a line. So it just kind of depends. Pine is more consistent, at least the the select pine. If you get cheaper grades of pine, then you'll get a lot more of that, um, you know, uh, horizontal grain. We've always found, though, that cedar uh, is is very much like redwood. 
like Clear Heart Redwood. It, uh, it carves real easy. I like cedar better, no doubt. And especially that new... It smells better, too. <clears throat> that new aromatic cedar. Oh, man. That stuff is just so cool. That one I carved the little that little duck hunting thing on. And, and uh, yeah, and Ashley Roger and Becky Bain, we talked about them the other day. They're a source for that aromatic cedar. So go back and watch a video from the other day. I'm going to put a link to that. Yeah, I'll put, that, I'll put their link in this video again as well. But they're, uh, they actually have access to a lot of that, that if you guys are looking for some of that, um, they can help you out. Uh, Mr. B says, is MDF any good for carving? I did some in MDF. Well, I did some Xtera, uh, which is like MDF. And then I actually did some MDF too. Um, it, it actually carves okay. It's, it's okay on the bits. It's consistent, obviously, no grain. Um, definitely wear a mask. Uh, I don't really care for it that much myself. But some guys are some guys are using it, and having having good luck with it. The cool thing about it, the advantage is it comes in four by eight sheets, so you don't have to laminate any oh. boards. If you're staining or all painting, it might be a good option for you. Yeah, a lot of the CNC uh, carvers are using uh, MDF. Yeah, some of them are using HDU, which is high density urethane. Uh, makes great looking signs. Yeah, it, it's hard to carve by hand because of the dust, but uh, but either either one of those, MDF or HDU, will make nice signs. Joe Red said he contacted, I think he's saying he contacted Roger and Becky. He's waiting for a quote. Oh, great. Yeah. Good. I hope um, that works out. I really do. Marty's Ramblings, he, wa he says, what is an average price that you would suggest for selling signs? Maybe an 8 by 20 with just the last name like the Andersons inside <coughs> lettering. Uh, if it's inset letters, 8 by 20 eh, I would say a good, fair price, 35 to 40 bucks. I mean, I'm just kind of, uh, you know, depending on how much your material costs, depending on your location. If you're, in, uh, if you're in Monterey, California, you might get 60 bucks for that. If you're in Tupelo, Mississippi, you might only get 35 or 40 bucks. You got to know what your area will bear. When I first went up to Oatman, I had my prices uh, set a little bit too high because there was a lot of people there. They were kind of bargain shoppers. Well, it was even though it was a tourist area, it wouldn't the the my my prices I had to bring down, and I learned that over a period of several months where my where my uh, kind of my sweet spot was for pricing. But basically, I, I'd say for an eight by twenty inset or outset letters. Honestly, I, I charge about the same. Um, I, I'd say 35 or 40 bucks is a fair price. Okay, I think we have time for one more question. Justin Hellickson says, about how often should I be sending my profile bits back to be sharpened? Also, is there a way I could sharpen them myself with a Dremel? With a Dremel? With a Dremel. Uh, I don't think so. No, no it's... Uh, you, you know, you might, get a, you might get a flat diamond hone and touch them up. Uh, other than that, you're going to need a diamond wheel, and you're going to need to know a little bit about tool geometry. If you're going to touch them up yourself, you better know how to grind a tool. If you have a local, if you have a local uh, shop in your high school with a with a mechanic in there, machinist in there, they might teach you how to do it. But it's a uh, I studied as a machinist for years, took a course in tool engineering technology, and it took me a long time to learn how to sharpen tools. So it isn't anything that you just pick up overnight. Now, there, I know there it's are... It's not difficult, but it's, it's, uh, it takes a while to learn. There are some of those credit card sharpeners that are diamond. That's a flat diamond That's hone. That's a flat diamond hone. Uh, but it's difficult to do on the profile bit because you just don't have that much flute there. If you've got a big bit like, uh, you know, like the 45 degree chamfer bit, something like that, it's fairly simple. You take the, you know, you can, there's a lot of surface there. But with the profile bit, man, you just don't have much surface there. Makes it really, really tough to do. So when we sharpen it, we hit the outside edge rather than the inside of the flute. Um, 
how often do you send them back when they get dull? You know, when it gets hard to push, when it gets hard to hold a line, when it starts burring up, depending on the material you're cutting and how many letters you're cutting, how many signs you're cutting, I, I find the average is 20 to 30 signs, something like that, if you're cutting fairly soft material. If you're cutting oak or cherry or alder or walnut, it's not going to last that long and not going to last that many signs. So um, I got a couple more that I think are quick ones. Yeah. What do you use to, uh, Greg Bybee, what do you use to clean your brushes after using uh, one shot? I use uh, thinner, just paint thinner. Yeah. Um, it works. It works good. Okay. And then one more. Jeff Neal says, what, it, what is your total count of videos that you've done? He says, I've shared, he shares them all the time. Um, it's over, it's, I think it's pushing 730, 730, I think, total videos right now. I, don't, I haven't looked, honestly. It's way over 700. Um, so I think it's like 720, 730, 740. It's all the same. Okay. <laughs> it's a lot. 700 it's, plus. Yeah, 700 quick, plus. Mark, Mr. B says, um, God damn it. Oops. Where did that come from? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, Vicky's turning red. <laughs> Mr. B says, is there anything about carbide that's harder to sharpen? Anything yeah, about car carbide is, you've got to have either a carborundum green wheel or diamond. There's only two things that will touch carbide, either diamond wheel or a carborundum green wheel. Yes. Robert Portella says, my ears. Yeah, yeah. I am that was so Vicky. sorry. That was Vicky profanity. I know. I get shame, frustrated. Shame, shame, shame. <laughs> let's, let's cut this off before I really embarrass myself. Anyway, Too late. happy Easter. Everybody. All right, you guys. Uh, that's it for now. Uh, you know, if we... <laughs> Frank Jenkins says the kingdom is in shock. <laughs> <laughs> I'm oh. so sorry. Uh, Mr. Oh. B said, I thought you said that to me. <laughs> Sorry, you guys. Um, thanks, guys, for watching. Again, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. I know most of you have subscribed. Um, we so appreciate all of the support. We always have a blast doing this. The last Saturday of every month, uh, almost always. Um, and uh, f don't forget, I'm on, uh, I should add another sign to this. I'm on Instagram now, posting every day, make a wood sign. And uh, uh, be sure and click that little bell icon so you get notifications when we post new videos. So this, I don't know, again, it's up in the air whether we'll just stick with a YouTube Live video or whether we'll post the camera version of this. I don't know. We'll see you in the next few hours. Happy what? Easter, Happy everybody. Happy Easter, God everybody. Bless. Stay safe. Yep. And uh, remember what Easter is all about. Yeah, that's right. So, he is risen. He is risen indeed. All right, guys. Thanks. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Pick.